Okay, lesson three in unit three. Lesson three is all about consequences of the mean value theorem. Consequences of the mean value theorem uh, and the applications of the derivative in general. Uh, today, I want to finish up our look at the mean value theorem by looking at some of its applications, some of the things that the mean value theorem lets us do that we couldn't do before. There are three big corollaries to the mean value theorem. I want to hit all of them with some kind of rigor. So corollary number one, let f be continuous on the closed interval a, b and differentiable on the open interval a, b. Uh, and that's so that we can use the mean value theorem, because the mean value theorem requires a continuous differentiable function. If f prime is positive on a, b, if f prime is positive on a, b, then f increases on a, b. If f prime is less than zero, if f prime is negative on a, b, then f decreases on a, b. This is one of those things that we do in a pre-calculus course that has some calculus in it. Uh, we kind of drive home the idea that if a function is increasing, its derivative is positive. If a function is decreasing, its derivative is negative. But we don't get into a whole lot of the why that happens because we don't have the mean value theorem yet. Uh, I would like to prove this result for you. All right, sorry, I had to hit the pause button really quick. So I want to prove this. This is actually very provable. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to let x1 and x2 be in the interval a, b, and we're going to say that x1 is less than x2. So what does the mean value theorem tell us? The mean value theorem tells us that f of the second minus f of the first is equal to f prime of some number c times the second minus the first. This is that crazy fractional equation, f of b minus f of a over b minus a, uh, except that we've multiplied both sides by b minus a. So what happens? This happens for some c because we are continuous, we are differentiable. So what happens? I know. If this is positive by assumption, and I know that this is positive because it is, then this must be positive. And that being the case, what does that mean? f of x2 is bigger than f of x1. f is increasing. Similarly, oh, oh, give me, give me more. Give me more. What if, what if f prime of c is negative? If that's negative, this is still positive. And so this must be negative. And what would it mean for that to be negative? It would mean that f of x2 is less than f of x1, which means the function is going down as we read from left to right. So one of the big consequences of the mean value theorem is our test for increasing and decreasing functions. Corollary 2. If f prime is 0, on some interval a, b, then f of x is a constant on the, the interval a, b. 
if f prime is zero, then the function is a constant. And this comes right out of mean value theorem, because mean value theorem says that if f prime is zero, then f of b minus f of a over b minus a is zero. And if that's the case, we cross multiply. Not really, but close enough. Well, that means that f of b is equal to f of a, and that's true for any two points we decide to pick in that interval. And so f of x is some constant, uh, which also happens to be f of a, which also happens to be f of b, and we have what we wanted. So corollary two of the mean value theorem is that if my derivative is always zero, then my function is always constant, which brings me to corollary three. Corollary three says if f prime of x equals g prime of x on some interval, then the one is the other with a shift, a vertical shift on AB. And again, one of those things that makes sense to us, that we say, OK, if two functions have the same derivative, then they must be plus or minus a constant the same thing. So how do we sketch that? Well, we let h of x equal f of x minus g of x. And since f and g prime both exist, f prime and g prime both exist, then h is a continuous differentiable function. Mean value theorem applies. Um, h prime of x is f prime of x minus g prime of x. And we're told that f prime is g prime, so h prime is 0. Wait a second. H is a continuous differentiable function. It satisfies the mean value theorem, and its derivative is 0. By corollary 2, that means that h of x is a constant, which means that f of x minus g of x is a constant, which is exactly what we wanted to show. And so three very big results for us all flow from the mean value theorem. What are our highlights for today? We know the increasing decreasing test because of the mean value theorem. F is increasing if f prime is positive. F is decreasing if f prime is negative. We know that if you have a derivative of zero on some interval, you are a constant. And that's the only way to do it. And if two functions have the same derivative, then they are the same function plus or minus a number. There you go. Lesson three in the books.